Hey, this is Mr. Passon. It's time for lesson two. So today we're going to be talking about integers on the number line. The first thing that I need you to do is go line. And the page is going to be 1-2, so that's unit one, lesson two. All right. Now, next thing we want to do is we want to go to our next blank page. And at the top, we're going to write integers on the number line. And then 1-2 in the upper right-hand corner. So when we're taking notes, uh, you're going to be writing this stuff here, uh, and it just helps if you make that key information written down each time. I'm again going to fold my uh, notebook in half, fold the page in half, so I'm thinking about working on the left side and then on the right side. Now you should have the link to the notes, so go ahead and open that up. Put in your name, today's date and the period that you are in. Don't forget to put both numbers. All right, now it looks like I forgot a text box here, but we're talking about integers on the number line. So up until now, we've thought about numbers as representing like values, like the number of eggs that you have in a basket, or the number of cars in a garage, or the amount of money that someone took home in their paycheck. But now we're going to think of numbers as a position, and we're going to imagine this number line right here and so we've got, if we go to the right, it's going to be positive, and if we go to the left, it's going to be negative. So integers are positive or, and it looks like I forgot the little box here, so add a little text box, negative, whole numbers who can be represented with a number line model. So now we want to mark the point both 5 and negative 5 on the number line here. I'm going to, again, just grab another text box here. And then at negative 5, I'm just going to space over and then put a little X there. And it's not quite in the perfect spot, but it's pretty close. So I'm going to count that as good. And then I'm going to keep hitting space over here. And there is our 5. All right. So again, we're going to think of the position um, as to the right is going to be positive and to the left is going to be negative. And so now uh, negative numbers, are on, we're only going to be talking about where positions are. So if we end up with a negative answer, that's totally allowed. It's just where to the left of zero. Okay? So I'm going to scroll down a little bit. We have another new concept that we're going to focus on. I think all of you already know that zero is an important number. And the distance from zero is something we're going to pay attention to. So the absolute value is the distance away from zero on the number line. So here we're going to introduce a new vocabulary term. So we're going to call that distance, that sort of idea of how far away something is. That's going to be the magnitude. And magnitude by definition is sort of how big something is. It doesn't matter whether it's in the positive direction or the negative direction. It's just how far it away is away from zero. So the magnitude of a number is always the absolute value. And then when we say that, we're going to denote the absolute value with these two little vertical lines here. And we would read this as the absolute value of negative 5. Okay, so we say the absolute value of, and then we say everything that is in the inside here. All right, so now let's determine the absolute value. Well, how far away is negative 8 from 0? Well, it is 8 away. How far is negative 1 from 0? Well, it is 1 away. How far away is 3 from 0? It's 3 away. How far away is negative 4 and a half from 0? Well, it's 4 and a half away. And then let's go ahead and hide this for a bit. Move it out of the way. And 6 is 6 away. So notice that the absolute value is always positive. And again, I'm going to add a little text box here. I didn't like the x's, so we're going to try o's this time. And maybe we'll try zeros. Ah, zeros look pretty good. So let's go ahead and find, hey, there is 1. Then we had 3. Then we had 4.5. Then we had 6. And I can get that one lined up a little bit better. And then we had 8. 
So notice that when we have the absolute value, they always show up on the right-hand side because the absolute value is always going to be the positive version. So now we've got this idea of a number and its opposite, and the absolute values are the same. So first of all, we're going to go ahead and complete this table. So what is the absolute value of negative 6? How far away is negative 6 from 0? Well, it is 6 away. What is the opposite of negative 6? Well, it's 6. What is the absolute value of 18? How far away is 18 from 0? That's 18. What's the opposite of 18? Negative 18. Go ahead and take a minute, fill out in the rest of this one, and then I'm going to do the same. And feel free to pause the video if you need to. Okay, so the absolute value of 34 is 34, and its opposite is negative 34. The absolute value of negative 67 is 67, and its opposite is also 67. The absolute value of negative 128 is 128, and the opposite is 128. So let's read this question. Use the table on the left to determine which two columns could be added up to get a sum of 0. Well, if we add this number and this number, we get 0. But if we add this number and this number, we get 36. So it's not these two. Let's try these two. 6 plus 6 is 12. That doesn't work. So let's try a number and its opposite. So if we take negative 6 plus 6, that's going to be 0 because we went left 6 and then right 6. Then 18 plus negative 18. So it looks like if we add a number and its opposite, we will always get 0. And that's a good idea. So we're going to talk about, like, that's a very powerful thing that we're going to use to solve equations later this year. All right. So now we want to model. So we're going to think about positives and negatives, and we're going to draw arrows. Now, for this, we're going to switch from our squiggle tool here to our little arrow tool. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit further, which, by the way, Control-Alt equals will let us zoom in a bit more and make this nice and big. So every time I'm going to have to click an arrow, it's a little annoying. So every time you're just going to go up and click here. So we want to draw an arrow from 0 to negative 1. zero to negative one. And that is one to the left. So we drew an arrow from one to the left. Now we want to draw an arrow that is four to the right. But the way that I want to do it is I want to start here. So we're going to go over one, two, three, four. So we've got a one to the left and a four to the right. And we add them up, we get three to the right. So that's going to be a positive three. All right, let's look at this one down here. So I want a 1 to the left, and then I want a 4 to the left. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So that ends up being 5 to the left, so that's going to be negative 5. Let's look at this one over here. We're going to have this first one's a positive 1, so is it going to be a 1 to the right or a 1 to the left? It's a 1 to the right. Then we add another arrow, and we're going to do go, this one's a negative 4. So we're going to start wherever we ended. We're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. So this one, where we ended when we put those two together, is negative 3. All right. Last one, 1 plus 4. So we've got a positive 1 arrow. And then another arrow that is Four. So we get that that is 5. All right? Huh. Do you notice any patterns? Think about the patterns that you notice. And I'm going to zoom out again so we can look at all our pictures. And that was Control-Alt-Minus. Control-Alt-Minus will get you out uh, minimized there. All right. So, 
Well, I noticed when the signs are the same, that it just gets like further away. So if the signs are the same, it's like normal addition. But if the signs are different, they cancel out some. So that's the, oh, I can't spell. Different, different. They cancel some. And we're going to formalize that in a bit. So let's think about what this is going to be. And I expect you guys to do these six on your own. All right, now I'm going to cover three of them in just, uh, ooh, actually, these are subtractions, so maybe we do want to talk about these. Let's think about this. So let's, I'm going to cover three of these, and then you're going to do the other three, hopefully. So let's do, I'll do five, seven, and nine, and you guys can do six, eight, and ten. So let's think about our arrows. The first one is an arrow to the right. And then we're taking away four. So we want an arrow that four to the left. So we still ended up at, or we ended up at negative 3. So 1 minus 4 is negative 3. Now let's think about this one. Well, we've got a negative 1 to start off. And then we're subtracting a negative. So we want to go the opposite of this negative 4. So rather than going to the left, we're going to go right. 1. Two, three, four. Because a negative means go the opposite of whatever this is. So this negative four was four to the left. Subtracting a negative four would actually be four to the right. So there we ended up with three. So this one, again, we're going to start with an arrow. We're going to start at zero and go one, two, three. And then, well, we want to go left five, but we actually want to do the opposite of that. So the opposite of left 5 is right 5. So we're going to go right another 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And there we get that our answer is 8. So now think about that and try to apply that to these. So when you subtract something, you just look at what that second number is. And if it's to the right, well then you're going to then go to the left. If it's originally an arrow to the left, well you're going to switch it to make it an arrow to the right. Now go ahead and summarize what you learned today after you finish those, and then I'll see you in the live session, and I'll probably ask you about these three questions.